so we, for each and everything we create variable and all the variables will be bound to that particular object. So uh, as we grow on, as the application grows, uh, we will be creating so many objects in that and uh, we uh, sometimes we may not uh, need some of the objects which are not used also and there is no reference for those for objects also. So for that, there is an inbuilt mechanism provided by the Java that is called a Java garbage collection. So we can force, we can force sometimes if we think uh, we need to be gar some objects to be garbage collected, we can force the garbage collect to collector to collect uh, to the garbage collection. Also. So it will clean up the memory which uh, where the objects are not uh, still references. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, so all the objects are getting garbage collected or if in case explicitly you have to do some garbage collection mechanism, what would be your approach? Uh, actually in, in our process which we are not using if uh, multi-tasking windows we are using. If we are uh, closing that particular window and uh, uh, regarding uh, whatever the uh, objects which are related to that window, we are uh, setting it to null and doing the garbage collection. So sometimes even the garbage collection may become uh, hectic for it. It, it, it can be uh, user's choice. If they want to do it, they can do or else uh, let uh, the JPM do it for you. Okay. So can you just explain me what is uh, composition and aggregation? Composing uh, a class uh, is like normal attributes keeping in a keeping in a class is like composing a class. Whereas aggregating is like even uh, there is there is like address field that can be a separate uh, uh, separate uh, class. I, it can have again separate properties in that. So if we try to put that into one user's thing, then that is known as aggregating that into that class. Okay, uh, so uh, can you just explain me the uh, memory model? Like there will be heap memory where all the objects will be stored and mm -hmm. uh, there, will, there is stack memory where uh, the objects are referenced into it. and there is a one uh, string pool constant, string constant pool uh, where all the strings are stored. but. Uh, if we, if we create a string by using new keyword instead of just the literals, that will be still stored into the heap memory. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, we'll go with the Java 8 first. So, uh, do you know uh, what is the, uh, this meta space? Meta space. Can you give a hint? I read about it, but I am not able to read it. Okay, it is something uh, related to JVM. There is uh, some change in meta space, the memory management changes. Okay, so what is the default method uh, uh, and what is the relevance of the uh, those default methods? Uh, default method is like, uh, as as we know, Java introduced some main, main major changes in it. Can, can you do it? My voice is getting Java made uh, changes such as streams and uh, uh, what we call uh, lambda functions, functional interfaces, this kind of thing. So when they introduced streams, they didn't uh, change anything. They uh, put the put the code into the existing interfaces and also it is like backward compatible kind of thing. So the existing code also they did not change. So that process they made all uh, available for the general uh, user also. By, by introducing default inside the interface. So previously, up to Java 7, we were able to uh, declare the methods in the interface only, but we were not uh, able to write, define uh, define the method. But in, from, from Java 8 onwards, we can define the method also, but we have to use the keyword default. By using default keyword, we can define the methods inside the interface only. Okay. Okay. So that is the case with streams and uh, when streams got implemented by using the default method inside the existing collection uh, interfaces. 
Uh, so what is the difference between map and flat map? Never worked out, never understood. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what is a parallel stream uh, in Java 8? Yeah, parallel stream is like when you want to, uh, uh, like, uh, let, let's understand the concept of a stream first. Uh, see, stream is something like the continuous flow of the data to uh, data to process or do a thing. So, in case uh, parallel streams are something like instead of one 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 flow of data, we can uh, create uh, two two uh, two or any uh, parallelly we can uh, do the streaming. That is uh, that is the uh, basic logic behind the parallel streams. Two two flows will be two flows or any parallel streams can be done. So, okay, okay. Uh, so we'll move on to the spring. So uh, you said you are working on the REST APIs also. So how are you authenticating your uh, APIs in a Spring framework? By using uh, Spring security, Spring security dependency. If you add into the bomb you know, then the default security mechanism, default authentication mechanism will be. Uh, added to that uh, with uh, one one default uh, user and uh, password password auto generated. But for if you want to have our own custom authentication on top of that, we need to uh, override uh, we need to extend the web security configurator adapter class, and we need to provide uh, what are the uh, roles we have like admin roles or anything. And by using ant matches, what are the routes uh, we have? So for that particular role, which roles can uh, access like if there are some set of 10 routes we have, out of which only uh, two, uh, two routes are for uh, user and uh, four routes are for managers and four routes are for uh, only for admin. So uh, we can specify which, are, which routes are for which role. In that way, we can achieve the authentication. And uh, the configuration can be done into the database, the user and pass, username and password, the roles. Okay, so it is a role-based authentication you guys are doing. Okay. Yeah. So any idea about JWT or to JSON Web Tokens? Uh, we are uh, starting to work over it. Uh, we uh, have we get the clear idea whether there is any security local or not. Because uh, as as the JWT token will be stored on the client browser. Uh, we, we were having a little hesitation to do that, but uh, we we gone through that. It will be encrypted by using uh, one primary key on the server side, and it will be stored, and it will be encrypted also. Uh, but still, we are thinking of doing that. We extensively work on the normal screen security. Okay, so uh, how you guys are enabling a transaction like uh, in uh, your APIs like? Flow of the flow of the um, APIs you want to explain. So there must be some transaction management you guys must be doing in your application. So through through Spring repositories we are doing initially with, before uh, uh, implementing the Spring repository we had we used Entity Manager and uh, using uh, what we call JPA containers were there. For that uh, we we manage the transaction in, in that way. After that, uh, now we are doing much of the transaction uh, based on uh, by the string report. So, what is the advantage of using JPA? Uh, it will be like uh, finding what are the entities we have in, in our in our object-oriented programming model to the. Uh, database model and that will be persisting with the database like uh, much of the connection connection things and also uh, mapping mapping exact columns into uh, the database all those things will be taken care by JPA Java persistent mm -hmm. uh, so how are you guys like uh, like you are aware about the mappings like uh, many to one, one to many. Many to one, so, one to many. <coughs> how you are achieving many to one? Uh, by using the annotations, like uh, if, if there are uh, uh, the, if 
there are like uh, invoices which are generated for uh, generated by one let's suppose there are transactions which are generated by one particular uh, uh, like, like sales will be there that particular sale is uh, reference to particular employee so which which employee is there so one one employee will be mapped can be mapped to multiple uh, piece of uh, sales so uh, in that in that we'll be having uh, many to one annotation to this this uh, this code of that and from here one to one to many maps in, in both the, in the both in the both the pages we have to do that particular thing with the that annotation Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the microservices architecture, how are we managing the uh, transaction? In that, we never work with the transaction. Now, currently, we are working with the data fetching between the different microservices. Transactions, mm -hmm. we still uh, we didn't do that. Yet. Okay. But so, any idea about two-phase commit uh, and anything uh, two-phase commit? You know? Two-phase commit and all. Uh, no idea. Can you give a hint? I may be. Yeah. So this is the one way of uh, having a transaction management. Uh, Two-phase commit, access standards. So. Sorry, I'm not having. No problem. Uh, so, like, if you have to design one portal. For the online document signature, so what would be your approach in that case? Document signature in the sense PDF signature, ah? Huh? Yes, online document signature. You can consider it is like a digital signature. Digital signature. So we have uh, 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 like authorities which which provide the private keys and public keys uh, for for uh, digital signatures and all. So for digital signing from the from the authority, we have to get that. Uh, certificate like dot pfx file will get it. So after uh, getting that particular file, uh, we have bouncy castle dependencies in map. So using bouncy castle dependencies, we we uh, and uh, in, in bouncy castle Maven dependency only we get a doc signer, uh, uh, doc signer or some classes there. By using that bouncy castle dependency, we can uh, keep that. Uh, uh, Certificate into that, and we can do the digital signature for the PDF. Mm -hmm. But this is what you are explaining me about the digital signature process. But if you have to design that portal, what portal? Okay. Yes. Uh, so let us consider only uh, we have uh, we need to uh, do the upload uploading the document. After uploading the document, we'll store it into the some uh, some of our servers. Uh, 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 Servers uh, memory where which is um, uh, location. In that location, again uh, after after the upload is done, we'll check whether the uh, file is available or not. Then we'll uh, do the digital signature. Error. Then afterwards, after signing that document, uh, the signed document will have a separate copy. So after that, we'll uh, provide an option to download that, so the user can download. And again, uh, if uh, that is like for a single company, single process. But whereas if it is like a public service, like anybody can come and upload the certificate and do, uh, so then we'll uh, provide like two 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 things that to upload their own certificate over there, and also the, the document which they want to sign. So uh, to after doing two uploads, we'll verify whether, whether those doc two documents are present, certificate as well as the PDF document is present or not. Then after that, we'll do the signature, the record one, the previous due date. Then uh, we'll after generating the signed document, we'll provide an option to download. That way we can do that. If there is any uh, mechanism if we want to do uh, authentication or anything, we can provide it. Okay. Uh, so uh, you need to write one program. So to check whether a number is Armstrong number or not. So uh, if you are not aware about the Armstrong, it is something like if I pass. 153 as a input so if you will see 1 cube plus 5 cube plus 3 cube together if you will sum up all these three uh, cubes so it will come as a 153 the sum will come as a 153 so you need to uh, uh, write a program to check this number is uh, armstrong or not okay so uh, 
सो आई नेबल आई हैव नेबल द एडिटर फॉर यू हाउ कैन आई 